The next job I need to do on these is clean the rust off this, which is metal, chrome metal. When you've seen me do the plastic part, the shell, I've cleaned all the rust off that and polished that up. I'm going to do the same with this. Uh, basically I'm going to do, treat it exactly the same, vinegar, to get the worst off, because it's not abrasive. Uh, and then the polish, the fine polish, just to polish it up. Um, but there's no reason why I can't do that as it is um, on the on the actual dial itself. But I also want to. Something you can see it on on there is refresh the actual dial face plate itself and the needle. That the white bits are actually yellow. They've gone yellow, um, and the blue is a bit dull and faded and the, the black itself is slightly faded, it's, it's more of a dark grey than a black now um, so I just want to brighten them up a bit, freshen that up which I'm going to do as well and to do that I've got to take this ring off anyway and the glass off so I might as well clean it once it's off I always find things easier to clean uh, when they're off than when they're on So. The first thing you've got to remember is that is pretty much as far as you're supposed to take this thing apart. It's not made to come apart uh, any more than that. It's supposed to be sealed. Um, the way it's sealed is at the factory. This metal is actually crimped over this plastic shell and crimped together. And basically it's meant to be sealed for life. but. Obviously, to get that base plate cleaned up, I need to get in there. Um, it's fairly simple. All you got to do is lever this lip up, just bend it up like that. Um, now, this is probably one of the more difficult ones you'll find. They're all very much the same in their design, but this one has got a very thin lip there and a very tiny gap between the body of the ship. This to get underneath to get anything underneath to lever it up. Um, normally I'd use a round edge knife or something like that just to get underneath and, and start levering it. You don't want to use anything with a sharp edge like a flat bladed screwdriver or anything like that um, really if you can help it because you want to leave as few marks on this as possible so when you come to put it back together and you, what you're going to have to do is crimp that back over and if you've creased it with anything the sharp edge, you'll never get them out. Uh, and the other thing to remember is when you're trying to lever this open, you're not trying to bend the whole lot that way, just that little bit that's crimped over, you're trying to stand that up vertically. So this flat edge here, the bit you can see, wants to stay where it is. Just that bit that's hidden by the shell, you want to be trying to stand that up from there to there vertically and then you can lift the shell out or lift the, this off the shell should I say um, now let's say the access on this one is probably the tightest I've ever come across um, so what I've had to do I found this which is an old screwdriver that's been had the edges worn off it so it's basically rounded with a slight flat I and mean, it's rounded at the end with a slight flat um, and all I'm going to do is just try and get underneath once you can get underneath and get it levered up slightly there we go it's starting to move now you can just work your way around like this don't try and bend it straight up just work your way around bend it a little bend it a little and go around um, let's say don't try and do it all in one go just enough and remember you're trying to lift this ledge upwards you're not trying to bend the whole lot out so bear that in mind when you when you're doing this but if you can get that underneath it's not really it's the only thing I could find that would fit underneath here to be honest it's not it's a bit too long and it's got flex in it so it's making it a bit awkward but it's the only thing I could find to hand 
that will will fit. But here we go. Now, so you're bound to get. I mean, I've got a couple of creases there, a little bit of a bend there, but they'll come out uh, as long as you don't leave a, a deep crease in the metal. You will squeeze it back, uh, pretty much how it was. And like I say, this this actual bit that I'm working on now is covered by the shell anyway. So unless somebody takes it to bits, you'll never see. Um, I have seen people actually cut the plastic shell, cut with a Dremel or similar, and cut round, all the way around like that, and then lift this shell off to get the insides of these. Uh, and then normally there's enough flex to get behind that and bend the plastic and, and pull it out. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> um, you've got to glue that back together. You have a big glue lot. I just don't like it. Um, I'd rather do it this way. Um, I say there's different ways of doing it. This is how I do it. These, all my videos are not meant to be, this is how you do something. They're meant to be, this is how I do it. Um, you know, you'll, you'll have your own ways of doing things. Um, so I've seen people make special tools doing this. Brilliant idea. You know, you can make it to exactly what you want, but this is near enough for what I need. Um, so I'm just going to go with this. Um, like I say, this is the awkward bit when you, so you can get the first bit of lip levered up. It's quite difficult, and it's also obviously difficult with. That in the way, I'm not going to pull that off actually, I'm going to work around it. So, I'll have to go wrong handed for me, this is, but there you go. And that's it, I know it's crack, cracking and clicking, but it, I'm not doing any damage, I'm not actually damaging the metal even, it's just the access is so tight to get in that I'm going to get it started like that. You see that, you see where I've done slightly too much here, that's got a bit of a you can see it. You can see that where I've levered one bit up more than all the rest. You'll see that when I crimp it back down. You won't. It won't show, as I said, but it, because the shell covers it. But the actual plastic shell that goes on the back of the dial covers that. But so it's just a case of going round and round bit at a time. See another one there, I've just done another one but like I say, it's not a major problem. They're all pretty much the same principle as this. This is just happens to be one of the more awkward ones to get into and I'm making a bit more and I haven't got particularly got a tool to hand that can that can do that without making something that will do what I want. I could do with something pretty much like I've got there but with that much shaft on it to stop the flexibility because it's the tool is flexing and slipping but let's say it's uh, adequate for what I need to do with this one. If I was doing this for somebody else I'd spend the time um, making something suitable really um, but ideally I'd, as I say it would be something similar to this but even more make sure it's definitely rounded properly no sharp edges on it and also about four inches long instead of about six or eight and make it three or four inches long to stop the flex. That's why I'm slipping so much because this whole thing as I, I'm putting the pressure on it's getting enough pressure to start bending that and this bends as well and it flicks like that so that's why I'm slipping so much but like I say this is just adequate for what I need. And I say if I was doing it for somebody else I'd make 
an appropriate tool to do the job. A bit of a grinding on this would do it. You know, an old thin screwdriver like this and just grind it to what you want. Nicely rounded. And obviously, I'd say a lot shorter so it doesn't flex so much, but this is okay. Um, once you get to this sort of stage where I am now, a pair of smooth nose needle nose pliers, I mean these are something like that, but smooth face ones, these are serrated edge, is ideal. Again, stop your marking the the face because to get that in there you'd have to, you have to do that and you start getting on this face here and unless these are smooth faced or protected you're going to scratch the, the bit you can see so I'm gonna, just going to carry on like I am going round and leaving it out a bit, bit more bit more every time you go round I think we're about there. So, let's have a look. See if it'll come apart. Oh, yeah, there we go. There's the inside. And that's the ring, I think, if I remember. I can't do one of these for a while, but if I remember rightly, this, this comes off. Yeah, it does. It's moving. This is a separate ring, the bit I've just bent back on this one, yeah, there we go. Most of them aren't, most of them will be part of the just one piece of metal, but this particular one, that crimping ring or whatever you want to call it, is a separate item. But there we go, so that's the inside. And that's the outside. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, let's say I want to do the the dial itself, which I'll show you. I'll save that for a separate video. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is clean this. Now it's same same principle as I've done before with with the plastic. Really, I'm going to um, put it in white vinegar first of all to get the worst off. And get into all the nooks and crannies then with it easily enough. Um, and we can see how bad it actually is. Uh, now it's never, like I say, it's probably not going to be perfect, um, but I'm going to get it something like acceptable. Clean the glass inside and out for some reason. This one, which they don't normally do, has got. Something on the inside of the glass. Um, I don't even hear that. I don't know what it is. But uh, no, you can just see it in the light there. Look, there's something on the inside of the glass. And obviously the outside's dirty ish. So. Um, so I'm going to do the vinegar first of all and then polish it up see what it looks like when I've done that. So here we go.